Noosa Mining Virtual is back and I am pleased to introduce to you Alex Dorsch, Managing Director of Gold Explorer Chalice Gold Mines. I'm very much looking forward to this presentation. Let's hear it from Alex. Thank you, Amy, and thanks everyone for, for joining this, uh, this great event. Uh, it's a shame we can't be uh, doing this in person this year, but, um, but uh, yeah, definitely a, a worthwhile thing to be doing uh, over, over, um, over the web. Um, so thanks everyone for, for again for joining. I'll, I'll give uh, you a brief update and introduction into uh, to Chalice Gold, as, as Amy said. Um, so our normal disclaimers are available on our website if you'd like to view these and read these in your own time. Um, so Chalice is a is a fairly unique, well-funded exploration specialist. Um, we've got a proven generative model. Um, and we've got the uh, ability to define opportunities, um, make discoveries, and then ultimately define mines. Uh, and and we've, we've shown time and time again that we have a, a good track record in doing this. We've generated over 100 million Australian dollars over the last uh, sort of 10 years and, and actually returned some money to our shareholders in that time. So it's a very unique, um, unique trait for a, for a junior company. Um, we've positioned ourselves with a very strong balance sheet. We've got at the moment $54 million in cash and investments, and that allows us to do things that is uh, most juniors can't do. And it really allows us to look for those big company making opportunities and really take the long view on, on exploration. And that's certainly what we're doing at the moment. We have an unrivaled exploration portfolio. We're the dominant player in, in arguably two of the hottest uh, districts in Australia at the moment. Um, what we've what we've basically found uh, and what we've you know commenced is the you know with our recent discovery is the Julma nickel copper PGE province in Western Australia, uh, and we're also one of the largest holders of of a gold exploration tenure in the Bendigo zone in Victoria. Um, so this is where our, our projects are in our portfolio. As I say, we've got an ex a very exciting new discovery and really have, have commenced a, a, and kicked off a new mineral province in, in Western Australia, just outside of Perth. Um, as you can see there, our Julmar project. Uh, it's a greenfield discovery. Um, the very first drill hole was the discovery hole. Uh, it's 100% owned and, uh, and it's essentially an unexplored part of the, part of the world, uh, just about an hour's drive northeast of Perth. Um, and secondly, uh, we have uh, a very large land holding, as I said, in Victoria, over 5,000 square kilometres, uh, really extending northwest and northeast of the, of the Fosterville gold mine. Um, we have a, a really couple of very enticing targets there, all 100% owned, uh, and very much, you know, we're, we're at the frontier there um, of exploration in that part of the world. We're also in the western part of the Kimberley, where we have a very large land holding alongside IGO, uh, basically right next door to a, a, an isolated prospect uh, called Merlin. Um, so I guess the, the common theme with our portfolio is that they're typically greenfield holdings, they're very large holdings. And uh, I guess now with our, with our recent uh, performance and our recent exploration success, we've really, you know, shown that we, we are, a, a highly successful explorer in our own right. So corporately, um, we have a very tight capital structure and as I said, a very strong financial position. We're part of the, the, the Goida Group. Um, Tim is our, our, our long-standing chairman and has uh, been a shareholder since 2006. He currently owns 12% of the shares. Uh, Franklin Templeton, it's very unusual for, a, for such a large fund uh, based in San Francisco to hold a position like that in, a, in what was a junior company and now a substantially larger company. Uh, and then recently we, we raised uh, $30 million and really increased the size of our institutional holding, uh, which now is almost a fifth of the company. Um, we've attracted a number of analysts, uh, you know, now covering us, um, which is fantastic. That list is there on the left-hand side. Um, as I said, uh, cash of about $45 million, in, uh, including our investment there in, in O3 mining. Um, our working capital balance is around $54 million. Um, which is a very favourable position to be in. Uh, and our market cap at the moment sits at around 350 million Australian uh, dollars. And, and those who have been following Charles over the last six months would agree that just what an exciting period it has been for the company. You can see that the share price you know, came off a low of around 11 cents uh, just in, in March there. And, uh, and since the discovery, we're now sitting around sort of a dollar 15 per share. Um, and, and that's, uh, you know, that really reflects the, the excitement around what we found here in Western Australia. So Julma, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll provide some context and then a bit of an update of, of the discovery. 
Um, so we intersected high grade nickel, copper, PGEs, as well as some cobalt in our very first drill hole at the project. And really it has you know, kicked off a new province, a new mineral province for, for Western Australia. Um, what we have there is a 26 kilometre long um, complex that we think is a layered ultra mafic mafic intrusive complex. Uh, we staked that uh, in 2018 and really quickly saw that there hadn't been much work done at all on the project. Um, our exploration has initially focused on the southern end of that intrusive complex at the southern end of that of our granted tenure in the blue rectangle there on the left hand side. Uh, and really what I have there is a discrete a lens shaped mag feature um, and we've made the discovery in that, uh, in that intrusive uh, called the Gonville intrusion. Uh, so as I said, we discovered um, wide, a shallow zone of high grade nickel copper PGEs and really that, you know, that kicked off a, a big rush uh, and we you know, had really first, uh, first right there, obviously to pick the, the other prospective um, uh, areas of ground there. And, uh, and now we have over 2000 square kilometers of, of additional applications in, in the red in the red on that map on the left hand side. Um, so the, the Gonville intrusion itself, as I said, it sits at the southern end of the, the complex. It's 1.6 kilometres in length and about 700 metres wide in its widest part. Uh, it's a chonolith, which means that it's an intrusion that doesn't fit into a, another category of, uh, of, of intrusive bodies. Um, but that is quite significant in itself in that, you know, chonoliths host some of the most significant um, nickel sulfide ore bodies in, in the world. Um, there's two there listed Jinchuan in China and Kabanga in Tanzania, which have very, very similar regional geology and, and, uh, and geometry to the intrusions. Um, what's even more significant, um, I guess what you're looking at there is the, is the dimensions of the, of the intrusion. The, uh, the colored body there is the, is the mag um, response. Uh, and as you can see there, that it is a very large scale intrusion and we've really just started to, to, to drill holes into it only a number of months ago now. Uh, approximately 24 kilometres of that complex uh, extends under the, under the Julemar State Forest and we have yet to don't do any exploration in that area. So I guess it really highlights the, the, the sort of opportunity this is. Um, this project is a, is a, is a tremendous opportunity for, for further discoveries. Um, so, so Gonville itself is an exceptional new discovery with really, in our view, the potential to host a world-class deposit. Um, it has a few uniquenesses about it. It's got both high-grade massive and matrix sulfides carrying high-grade PGEs as well as nickel, copper, cobalt, and in some cases, gold. Um, really, we've only just begun to, to drill out that system and our high-grade zones remain open and we're drilling, uh, we're drilling um, those, those high grade areas on an 80 by 80 grid at the moment. Um, and then the other point of uniqueness about this, uh, this mineralized system is that every single other drill hole that we've drilled into the intrusion hits uh, disseminated sulfides that are enriched in PGEs, particularly palladium. Um, so we know we have, you know, I guess, widespread mineralization through this body uh, extending essentially from surface down to a depth of 450 metres, and that is, that is only constrained that depth by our drilling to date. Uh, and also on top of that uh, body itself, we have an oxide zone that's enriched in PGEs, so some quite high grade PGEs essentially extending from surface there down to, down to about 25 metres. So our strategy with this, with this uh, system is really to define as big as possible resource as we can. And really we have three rigs on that, on the, on the property at the moment. Uh, we're using all the geophysical tools available to us as well. And essentially those, the, the drilling is, is really, you know, can constantly now expanding the, the footprint of mineralization in this system, both in the disseminated as well as the high grade areas. So looking, zooming in on the high grade areas, um, we recently doubled the, the strike length of our G1 zone from about 200 metres of strike length to about 400 metres. As you can see there, it, it strikes sort of in a north-south orientation. It, it dips steeply to the west and you can see some of the intercepts there into that zone are, are quite impressive. So that our discovery holds 33 metres is 6.5 grams palladium, 0.7 grams platinum, 1.6% nickel and 0.7% copper. Um, some quite spectacular grades. Um, we've, we've hit also some, you know, other areas within that G1 zone um, that, that really, you know, paint a picture of a, of a very nice continuous zone of mineralization. It is very much open um, uh, to the south as well as down dip um, to the west. 
Uh, and then we have a, a couple of, of additional zones that are running essentially sub-parallel. We have the G2 zone to the east um, with, our, with our intercept there, 41 metres at 2.6 grams of palladium, 0.5% nickel, 0.4% copper and 0.03% cobalt. That is very much open to the south. Uh, and then recently we, we announced some, uh, some new zones, uh, essentially you know, parts of, uh, that not, don't correspond to the G1 and G2 zones. Um, we, did, we did recently announce last week 23.9 metres at 1.7 grams palladium, um, 0.4 platinum, half a gram gold, 0.1 nickel and 0.7 copper um, to the bottom of that hole. So, so we, we are um, now seeing a, a different type of uh, mineralisation at depth, a more copper gold rich part of the system. And I guess that, that's an, an indication of just how, you know, how uh, effective and how fertile this system is and, and uh, you know, the system continues to surprise us um, by delivering results like that. Uh, looking at that G1 zone in three dimensions, um, you can see there, it strikes over about 400 metres. It dips steeply to the west, as I said, and we're drilling that on a, on a very coarse spaced 80 by 80 grid at the moment. Um, you can see some of the samples there of massive and, and matrix sulphides. Um, I can show you essentially a, a sample of the, the massive sulphides here. It's very well preserved in, in fresh rock. Um, you can see some of the minerals there within those, um, those, uh, those specimens. Uh, essentially, it's, 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 it's very unusual to have such a high grade zone like that so close to surface. It's sort of within sort of 25, 30 metres of surface. So um, something that is obviously uh, very, very, um, very, very exciting indeed. Uh, and at the bottom of that figure, you can see that uh, that new copper gold zone uh, in the bottom of, of, uh, of JD5. Um, so very much a, a growing system. Um, and then looking at a, a, a cross section throughout the, the, the middle of that intrusion itself, just uh, you know, illustrating, I guess, the, the, the scale and the, and, the, and the widespread nature of the PGE mineralization within the intrusion. Um, it, you know, all indications here is that we have widespread you know, mineralization, so it is going to result in a very, very large scale um, PGE deposit. Uh, some of the intervals there you can see in that table uh, you know, extend over hundreds of metres uh, and then sort of in that half gram to two grams PGE range. The other, the other part of this project um, is that um, you know, Gonville itself is just that southern um, discrete mag anomaly at the, at the southern end of that figure. We have approximately 24 kilometres of that same geology, uh, or we're interpreting that same geology to explore. Um, we're waiting on access to, to go into that state forest area. Um, we've already identified one key target about 10 kilometres northeast of Gonville, so a very, a, a very attractive target there. It's got anomalous nickel, copper and PGE in soils, and it's got a very similar magnetic signature. Um, so we, we will be flying some airborne EM over, over the entirety of that, uh, that complex in, uh, in August of this year, and then we will we'll hopefully be, uh, be accessing that to do more reconnaissance and, and ground exploration uh, in the latter part of this quarter. So for those who don't know the PGE market, essentially palladium is our key metal in our deposit that we've found. Majority of PGEs are used as catalytic converters as in, uh, in, in engines. Um, and really the, the next phase of growth really for PGEs is in hybrids as well as fuel cell vehicles. So particularly hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, 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 is a growing uh, area of, of application for PGEs. There are no primary P PGE production uh, in Australia. So it is, a, it is a critical mineral really of, of strategic importance to Australia and the price, uh, particularly of palladium is now at record highs. Um, what are we doing on the project? Uh, it's listed out here. Essentially, as I said, we have three rigs turning. We're doing in, um, some initial med metallurgical uh, work at the moment. Uh, and our aim here is to define a, a, an initial made, a, a maiden mineral resource um, by uh, you know, this time next year, so within 12 months. Uh, and, that's, and that's what we're going to be continuing on with. Uh, Victoria, um, just a, a quick update there. Um, for those who are familiar, we have one of the largest land holdings in Victoria. Um, you know, to the northwest and northeast of the Fosterville gold mine. It's a spectacular gold mine, and uh, I guess that's what's drawn us to this area. Um, we've adopted a, a very value add, a systematic approach to, to exploring this area. We've identified now circa 15 targets, and we're really now honing in on the, on the two sort of key targets that we think we have, which is carry and, uh, and ironbark. 
really how do you find one of these gold systems in, in Victoria? It's, uh, it's, you know, find the dispersion footprints and then really narrow in on those dispersion footprints to look for the gold system at depth. And that's very much what we're, we're doing at the moment on our two targets. At, uh, at Cary, we did intersect um, gold in, with the first diamond hole some months ago now. We are waiting on a number of other um, assays for, for diamond holes on that target. Um, there should be an update out uh, within a couple of weeks um, with, the, with the remaining holes there. Essentially, we have a four kilometre long gold anomaly there that really deserves, you know, you know more time time. Now, Alex, we don't have much time. Okay. Um, so, so very much uh, looking forward to more results on, on carry. Also Ironbark, um, for those who are familiar, we've got two diorite targets there that host gold mineralization. We're waiting on our assays for our three diamond holes on, on those targets, uh, as I said, within a couple of weeks. So, so to wrap up, uh, you know, why is Chalison a, a compelling opportunity? Really our discovery there at Julemar is really um, a unique one and it really does have all the, all the ingredients of a world-class deposit. Um, we do have an emerging gold province there in Victoria and obviously the company has the track record and the financial capability to, to really execute on what it wants to do. So, so, uh, so that's, that's Chalice Gold Mines and, and, uh, and I thank everyone for their time. Thank you so much, Alex. Head on over to our website if you have questions for Alex and click on the Chalice Gold contact links. Next up, we have Cyprium Metals. Thanks, Amy.